This is the unboxing and review of the Gundam Barbatos from the Iron Blooded Orphans. This is the Master Grade Gundam Barbatos from Iron Blooded Orphans. This is the first and only Master Grade that exists for the Iron Blooded Orphans um, mobile suits, at least at the time of recording. I'm not sure if they have plans to do any others. It would be nice if they did. I think one of the reasons why they may not, and they just stuck to the Barbatos, which is the main mobile suit of the series, is that they did do one 100 scale uh, models under the full mechanics line. In fact, the full mechanics started with the Iron Blooded Orphans mobile suits. The first series of Iron Blooded Orphans 1100s didn't actually have the the title of Full Mechanics, they were just called 1100 Iron Blooded Orphans. However, those mobile suits were the, what Full Mechanics became based on. And then the second series of um, mobile suits that came out then held the Full Mechanics moniker on it. And they, they were, you know, it, it basically looks the same except, you know, that both, both series, that the emblem looks the same, just the wording is different. So, as with any kit, you've got some nice artwork right on the front cover, which shows it in action, and this looks to be the initial duel between the Barbatos and the uh, Greys. I can't remember what the commander's name was, but they had a big duel at the very beginning, like episode three or four, something like that. And this being a Master Grade... Uh, there is no numbering system, so it, there, there's no sequence to keep track of. But on the side here, they do have some photos, which have the front and back. They have it on a stand, which the stand is sold separately. And then one thing with the iron, uh, sorry, with the full mechanics is they have a true inner frame that's built first, and then the armor goes on the inner frame. So this is showing the inner frame, and the inner frame is what handles the articulation for the most part. And it looks like this has pretty, well, good details with um, pistons and stuff like that. And that's probably all formed right on the inner frame pieces themselves. So that's what this part is showing. And then this also has a couple of figures. One is the pilot seated, and then the pilot standed, standing. And... uh Mizuki is the name of the pilot from the Iron Blooded Orphans. He's one of the main characters in, in the pilot of this. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. Alrighty. So, one first thing I want to point out before going much further is that here in the markings diagram, there are actual stickers that go on to the actual inner frame itself. So when putting this together, it's important that when you put in, got an inner frame part, because it, looking in the instructions, the inner frame is actually built at the same time by body parts. So you would do the inner frame and then the armor would go on. So make sure that once you're done with an inner frame piece, you uh, check the back here to see what stickers or decals should be put on there, whether you're going to use the stickers that are with the kit or use water slide decals. So that would be important because if you wait till you're you're completely built, in order to put on the uh, decals on the inner frame, I'm very certain that you would have to start taking things apart to reach those areas. It's not always going to be visible all the time. So, and it might make it more awkward to put them on when everything's together. Even if you can see the area, you may not be able to get there with the, easily with the, with the uh, stickers and stuff like that. So I just wanted to point that out first. Okay, so here's the runners. Now the first first parts of the runners are for the inner frame themselves. They're all grouped together. And then the second part of the runners is for the... Uh, armor and weapons and stuff like that. So the inner frame comes with two A. You got an A1 and an A2. Now normally what happens is when you have a, a 1 and a 2 version of a runner, that means that there's some duplicated pieces. 
In this case, it's not. What happened is these were molded together and then taken apart as two separate runners. The nice thing about this, and there is no, from each runner, there is no duplicated parts. But also a nice thing is that the numbering system is continuous between the two. So in other words, you know, there's a 29 here, but there won't be a 29 on A1. So you can think of these as just A runners. And the numbering sequence works if you just think of these as a single A runner put together. You won't, the numbering system won't conflict with each other. They'll, they'll just be sequential throughout the piece. Here we have our B runner. And these here is, you know, this here is what I was talking about. You have two with just B, and that's because these are exact copies of each other because they're going to be probably for things like, you know, your legs and your arms, and these are also inner frame pieces. So it's going to be things that need two of something, and they just reproduce the runner twice. Same thing here. We have a C1 and a C2, and it looks like these are also duplicates. I don't quite know. Oh, I see. It's on both of them. Both of them have C1 and both of them have C2. That's why. So yeah, these are exact duplicates with the same numbering. It's just that this is a combination of two runners in one. Okay. At first, I thought it was kind of strange that they would have a <laughs> C1 and C2 that were duplicates, but then had a number after them. But it's really how the single runner is incorporated. Okay, so, and then we have our metallic plastic pieces. We got silver and gold. Gold is a little bit more translucent than the silver. And this is your D1 and your D2. I have a feeling these are probably going to go on to the inner frame to add some uh, detail and such to break up the, the gray. So now we're moving into the external pieces, which would be the armor, the backpack, stuff like this. So this is the first multicolored one. This would normally be an A runner on other kits because it would normally start with, sorry, just want to get the E oriented properly. Um, A would normally be the first one because it would normally, you know, you have a, mo a model kit that might just have, you know, inner frame and armor pieces incorporated together. Whereas this one is an E and this is the first external pieces. And so normally the first external piece runner is multicolor like this one is. And this being the primary mobile suit of a series, your colors are going to be your somewhat standard white, red, blue, and yellow. In this case, the yellow is a little bit more orange and the blue is a little bit darker, more purplish type but it's still going to be reflective of the original Gundam. That's that's what they do with, with the series. So we got in more armor pieces with your F1 and F2, and for the most part, these are duplicated, whereas the F1 has a few individual pieces which don't go with the duplicated parts. We've got two Gs. These look like they're probably backpack pieces or other highlight pieces. We have an H runner, which is some clear pink pieces, which is typical for the Barbatos, where you're glowing, you know, activated areas. We have here an I runner. We got I1, which is the blue pieces, and I2, which are weapons, and these are a green gray, almost like a mil I would say military green actually. And then your final runner is the J1, and this has other weapons, and it looks like these are the handheld, you know, the, the non-blaster weapons where you've got your sword, and then you've got all the pieces for the, um, the mace. I know that there's another one, I just don't know where it went. There, there's, a, there's a J1 and J2. The J2 has the other pieces as well for the mace. So, okay, they, there is some color correcting stickers, but just a couple. These are the metallic coated stickers where these are going to be for the eyes and probably a camera lens on the weapon or something like that. 
and then like I mentioned before, this is going to have uh, frame units that are done. And it looks like what they've done is you put together the inner frame for each section. So here's chest, and then you put the armor around it, as opposed to some kits like the MGEX uh, Freedom Gundam that just came out. You put the inner frame all together first, and then there's a separate section of the... Uh, instructions that puts the external stuff on. So just, you know, keep in mind that once you get the inner frame put together, take a look at the markings to find out if there's any stickers that you need to put, decals you need to put on, stickers or decals. I distinguish stick, stickers are the things that come with it, and then decals are the water slide as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, each, each part, like the head and the arms, is going to work that way. Inner frame, then the armor goes on right away. So it just goes through. Middle of the has some pictures. It shows the inner frame, some action. A lot of these are just duplicates of what are on the box. Got now the nice thing is this is a this is a newer one, so it's got both the Japanese and English translations for all the text and all the color uh, mapping and stuff like that. And they even have separate color mapping for the figures themselves. And then the markings, which I showed before, where you have your inner frame markings, and then you have your armor markings and weapon markings. Now it comes with the stickers, which are the satiny type. So these should blend in well with the, the model. You know, certain colors might show them worse, like, you know, your, your blues and stuff like that will tend to show them worse than, say, your whites or your other colors. Um, but these should be fine to work with. Maybe put a little bit of uh, decal setter on it, and that, that'll help them to, to blend more into the actual model itself. Now, I prefer to use water slide decals, and I was able to find some DL model decals. I've worked with this type of decal before, and they work quite well. I would say as far as third-party ones, this is more second tier. Um, quality, but they are still really good. My first tier ones would be the Delpi and the uh, G Rework, which are excellent. Um, very close to the um, the Bandai ones that come out. And, and I got these because at the time they didn't have the uh, Bandai hadn't released the Barbatos uh, Master Grade decals yet. Here is the Master Grade Gundam Barbatos from the anime Iron-Blooded Orphans. And this is the first Master Grade that I put together. I put together other 1-100 scale, but they were um, full mechanics or other things. But this is the first Master Grade, and I've got to say, this was an awful lot of fun to put together. There were a lot of little tiny parts for this, even though it is a 1-100 scale, which, you know, may clean up a little bit more uh, challenging at times, or at least longer. But the amount of detail on this, it was worth every second I had to spend cleaning up the pieces before doing the build. Because the, the one nice thing about Iron-Blooded Orphans, especially the Gundams in the Iron-Blooded Orphans mobile suits, is that the inner frame of the mobile suit is just as important as the armor as far as aesthetics is concerned. And for the Master Grade, they went w way above and beyond for the inner frame because the inner frame is, com is a completely separate build compared to put it and then and then putting the armor on so you have the inner frame which is a full inner frame everything has inner frame the head the, sh the arms the chest everything the legs which all goes together as its own posable piece 
And then the external pieces or the armor gets attached to the inner frame. And if you can see here, there are pistons in this as a detail, which in the anime you can see, but with the smaller scale models, it, it's not as nice. And they move. Now it's a little bit more, there's a piston there, and there's a piston there for the for the heel, and it will move up and down. It, it I mean the, the basically the pistons are each two pieces, which is the cylinder and the rod, and they're all over the place, including I mean here in the shoulder there's like two of them that control the movement of the shoulder in and out or at least the, where the arm attaches at the shoulder. Um, in the backpack, there is a piston there. That one comes out because there isn't anything preventing you from going as far as you can with it. Everywhere else where there's a piston, there's hindrances to prevent the movement from pulling the piston apart. In the backpack, it didn't because really the back in the backpack is because it's kind of just used as an extension and just aesthetics, not really functionality. And I'll get more into that when we go over the um, the articulation and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful model. I mean, there's even if I take the backpack off, there's pistons here to control. Let's see here, there we go, to control the head movement and the crunch for the waist. I mean, it's just absolutely remarkable. This this is definitely the best mobile, the best model I've ever put together. Um, and, and like I said, this was just so much fun to put together. I just enjoyed every second of it. It wasn't difficult. The pieces went together nicely. One nice little thing about this is that since the inner frame is completely separate for each section, it would, it, the first part of each section would be putting together the inner frame, and the second part would then be putting the armor and everything else on it. But in the markings for the decals that would go on the mobile suit, there was a completely separate section for putting if you can notice, there are, if you look up here, let me move that out of the way, there are decals on the inner frame, and they're all over the place. You know, there's little, if you look there at the, at the hip, there's there right there. So there are decals all over the inner frame as well. So there were two separate sections of the markings diagram, one for the inner frame, one for everything else. Now, the interesting thing is, is that there are places where I, you know, where the mapping, the markings diagram show to put uh, decals, but then they get covered up. But I think that's because of the fact that Bandai released a expansion for this Master Grade Barbatos, which allows you to make a Master Grade kit into any of the first six uh, iterations or forms of Barbatos, which are quite prevalent throughout the entire anime. So there are going to be certain forms where more of the inner frame shows. So those decals that were put on, depending upon the form that you decide to use, if you decide to get the expansion kit, will show for those types of things. That's how much detail and design was put into this, which is just amazing. I, I love this kit. I can't say enough positive about it. Um, I haven't even really encountered an issue with uh, moving it or anything like that where things come apart. It's a tight kit. And I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I seem to be bubbling over because I am, because this is, Definitely the best kit I've ever put together, and, and I know I keep repeating myself, but it's just that good. I recommend this for anybody, even though there are a lot of 
detail parts and you've got the pistons, the build itself is just as straightforward as any other kit. Bandai is very good in the instructions on showing exactly how to put it together and what order things need to go in order to get everything to fit together and, and move and all that kind of stuff. So I would not let the details in this, especially the pistons, scare anyone away from ever building this because it, it's just beautiful. And, and it's, you, know, you get this, one, you get this beautiful, very detailed kit. I mean, look at the face on there. I mean, that's Barbatos's face big time. That's very difficult to get in any other kit. And then just the beauty of the inner frame, the slim waist that's prevalent in many of the Iron Blooded Orphans mobile suits and just the, the you know, the, the, the kind of the high heel look of the feet and stuff like that. And, and the articulation, there's just so many little things that I'll, that I'll show when I get to the articulation part. It, it, this is worth anything. And, and it really wasn't that expensive. I think it might have been 40 or $50 or something like that. But it's worth every penny. It really is. If you, have, if you only want to build one Master Grade, I would recommend this one. One thing to note is that this model isn't just out of the box. Um, what I have done is I have done panel lining. And I also applied water slide decals. The kit does come with um, stickers, and they are more of the realistic style, where a little bit more satiny. So those would be fine to use, but I just prefer using water slide decals. And then I also did a um, matte clear coat just to protect everything, the decals and the painting and stuff like that. And I also painted the the pilot in there. Okay, let's take a look at the accessories. Now, with the um, with the hands, it's the type where basically the thumb and everything else about the hand is just snapped together and stays together, and then you just remove the fingers to give yourself the different types of hands. So we've got, and, and every type of hand has both a right and a left for it, so it's not like you have cases where you can only do one, you know, like you can only hold certain weapons with one hand, you can do it with both. So we, you know, we've got displayed hand, you know, the, the kind of the waving hand. We've got the punching hands, you know, for a fist. And then we have a grasping hand. And like I said, you have both for left and right. And, you know, the, 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 the thumb is one of those that has a ball joint so that it can be used to help grasp things. And I'll go more into that with the articulation. Now, what, you've also got several weapons. You've got the samurai sword, which is typical for the Barbatos. You, we of course have the mace, which is just a great weapon, unique to the Barbatos. It's just beautiful. And it does have the, you know, the, the spike that comes out. And this is much stiffer and easier to control than on smaller, like the, the high grade, where it can just kind of moves on its own, essentially. You can't keep it out. And then we have this, which is just this really nice gun, which has both a machine gun underneath and then a long range, almost bazooka type, uh, uh, rifle uh, gun on it, and, and this will move sideways and, I'm sorry, back and forth, and it's got the scope. And the nice thing about this is that there is no color correcting stickers on this. These are all just molded, colored pieces of plastic, except there is the lens for the, there's the lens right there for the scope, and then the eyes have the metallic, whoop, have metallic green in them as well, which are stickers. But that's it. And we also have the backpack, which is kind of a small one, which is typical for your iron-blooded orphans backpacks. They don't have these elaborate ones. And then we also have these clips here that can slide on to the equipment in order to 
attach them to the backpack, and those are done by moving these little things on the side here up, and then these are able to just slide in like that into place. So that you can, and you can hold all the equipment and you can even hold the gun. Um, except that it comes in with, it has its own little thing right there to allow it to slide into these, these things on the backpack. You don't need to use a clip for that. So the clips are just for the mace and the, um, the sword. And then another nice little thing, nice little, um, this is a to scale figure. Which is busy, uh, I forget what the pilot's name is, just a second. What is the pilot's name? Name's Misaku. And not only do you have this one here that is to scale, but in the chest, part of the detail is the pilot, is the cockpit. There we go. The cockpit has quite a bit of detail in there, including, you can see him sitting in there. That's the same figure, and that is pretty much right to scale as well. Where normally what happens is the, you know, if, if a model has figures, you'll get this one here that's to scale, but that one will be slightly less. But these these are consistent, which is very, very nice. And I did paint that one. I decided to paint that one since it was going in there, so I just kind of did it that way. I just didn't want this, you know, plain white <laughs> piece of plastic in there. And then when you're putting this together, you can't see him, but there's there's cabling that goes around the cockpit and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's so much detail that's just then covered up, which just makes the aesthetic even better, knowing that that stuff is, is, was put in there for that. So, so th that is the accessories. Now I'll take a look at the articulation, and there is quite a bit of articulation on this, especially where, you know, in where the uh, the pistons are and stuff like that. And, you know, unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, just to allow the pistons not to come apart and stuff like that, there is um, limiters on the motion that prevent the pistons from coming apart. So you won't be, you know, that the, there is limited movement where the pistons are and stuff like that, but that's okay because you just get the effect that's really, really cool. So. The head is typical where you have the back and forth. This little collar here can move as well. Oh, sorry. This little collar here can move up and down. You can turn the head all the way around. It's just on a ball joint. But most of the head movement back and forth comes from the piece that's in the ch that pops up from the chest because it has its own pivot and then it's controlled by you know the, the range of movements controlled by that piston there as far as the arms like is typical with many mobile suits the shoulder armor will move out of the way so that you can move the shoulder all the way up to at least a 90 degree if not a little bit more some of the armor does get in the way, like that just popped off because some of the armor gets in the way. But that's not too bad. So you can pretty much almost get it all the way up. Let's see here. Let me put this back on. Go. 
snap that on. It just has a C clip here that just snaps on. Oh, well, I'm going to get the angle right. So the arm can move all the way around at the shoulder. It can also spin at the upper arm. It can move back and forth. This, the, the elbow almost does a full 180, not quite. And notice there is this little tiny pip, um, piston right in there that's covered up by this. So it shows when it's, you, when you fully are, you know, bend the elbow. The, the wrist turns right here. But one of the really nicest things about the hand here is it has a real wrist joint. Now, more times than not, the wrist will be a ball joint, which allows you to have the movement all over, but it's not real. That's not how wrists work. Wrists are a hinge joint. With The reason why you can twist it is just because there's two bones that meet here, and they can move limitedly. But the main thing is it's a hinge joint. And that's what they did here with this hand, is it is a hinge joint. So it moves like an actual hand does, which is really, really great. I like that detail a lot. Um, so the waist right here, now because of the fact that it has these pistons, it can be a little bit stiff moving things. So you just want to be careful, but you can turn it just a little bit. Eh, probably about not quite a quarter of a turn. You can do crunch. You can do waist crunch there. And it has some nice, it has some crunchability there. It's got the typical skirts. They're a little bit small, but they do go up and move slightly because these ones here are on a ball joint. So they can move around. These here are just on a hinge joint. So they can move up out of the way. So for the legs and on the back, these just have a pivot point right here at the back. So they just go up and down. But nicely, you can get them out of the way as needed. One other nice thing is just because of the way this works is you can do some swivel at the hips themselves. So it gives a little bit more movement to the legs when you're positioning things. Let me just get the arm out of the way there. Let me get him out of the way. The leg can come all the way up at a 90 degree angle. It has some move, it has, it has some twisting movement here at the hip because you can't just twist like you do with the for at the forearm. So it does have a hinge there to get it to be able to, you can move it at a right angle. It can go forward. And the knee can go almost a full 180, but not quite. This here is just an attachment piece of armor, so you can move that back around if you want. And of course, when everything is is no is not, you know, when when the knee isn't bent, then it just fits right in here and covers up the space that's left by the armor. And this piece here can just go sliding forward, up and down, and has a little bit of movement in and out. But most of it is just getting it out of the way. And the nice thing is, is that gets it out of the way so you can really bend the knee back type of thing. And of course, it has all the pistons. All the pistons work as a in and out type of thing. 
we've got a little bit of movement here for the ankle back and forward and backwards. Once again, a little piston in there. Whoops. Another C clip right there. Sometimes C clips can come apart. Go. So the foot here has some motion at the toe, forward and backwards. It has this right here, which is your typical ankle armor. And it can twist as well, but it can't twist much because it's going to be limited by the piston. And you can really point the toe if you want to. Oops. So, I mean, you can almost point the toe down at 90 degrees to the, to the bottom of the foot. And when you move the armor out of the way, you can kick it back as well. It can go 90 degrees, a little bit more than 90 degrees actually to the back. And of course, if you have everything up and out of the way, you know, you'll be able to, you, you can twist <laughs> and such. There's many different, um, joints that allow you to move that leg around in the way that you want. Okay. So we have the backpack here, and there is some articulation to it where these little side pods come out. And, you know, th this will come off pretty regularly because there's nothing preventing it from coming off. And one thing that this does is it has this joint here because what you can do is with this on here, you can attach this weapon and just like you do any other thing. You pull these things up, these little side things, and those, those are what have the little catches that this thing, these bits here will go into, and you can put that like that, and then this weapon can be used over the shoulder attached to the backpack. And in the figure presentation, I've shown this being done. And it's not really as top heavy as it would seem with this big, you know, uh, barrel pointing out. It's, it's not as bad as it would seem. And, and this, of course, moves back and forth as well. So an another nice thing about the weapon in order to store it, because wh wh when you're using it as a weapon, you, you have this clip on one way. But when you're storing it, what you can do and this is really cool, and I'll put it this way so you can see the mechanism, is that, let's see here, all right. So what you can do is you pull out the barrel, and it can bend this way, and then you slide it back so that it locks into place there, and then this this here, that clip can be used to store it to store it on the backpack. Okay. 
as such. And then that would go on the backpack. And it would be stored right there on the back. You know, when you're using a different weapon or you can have, and like I said, you know, this here, whoops, wrong thing. These little clips, these can go on to here. And these, you just kind of turn them until it fits in. It'll catch, and then you can store it, because both halves of the backpack right here have those little clips that come out, and this can then be stored there. So you could be using the sword and storing the other things, or whichever weapon you decide to use, you can store the other two on the backpack. And there's no pegs or anything like that to put inside, you know, to, to use. It's these clips that these things get pushed out to hold on to it. And of course, the mace has the spike that can come out, and, and the handle moves slightly. But this is the real big thing that, you know, you can push this back in or out, and it's tight enough that it stays in place. Now, another thing you can do and just, let's see here, it's these ones here. You can see how they have just a little extra gap right here. And that means you can take these off. And these can be used as knives any way you want. And they would be with the gripping hands. And the way the gripping hands are is that there are, as you can see in there, there's a couple of slots. And everything that the gripping hands can hold on to has notches here. And you just place, and depending upon how the hand is oriented and all that kind of stuff, you'll find the ones that it's supposed to hold on to. So if it doesn't quite go, just kind of shift things around a little bit. And it will eventually fit and seed right in so that you can put it in. As you can see right there, it'll just fit into those. The notches will fit into the slots over there. And everything will, will come together as it's supposed to. And that, that's the same thing. The gun here, the handle has that. Um, it works somewhat with, with the base. It's these little ridges here that fit into the slots. And there's three of them. So you can, you can hold them with both hands as a weapon, and, you know, because you're attacking. And then you can just put these back in here and it's a full mace. But I think it's pretty nice that it has that extra little bit where these can be used as knives. And I've got that once again in the figure presentation. I've shown using holding on to those. As I've said throughout this review, is I absolutely love this kit. This is such a such a joy to put together. The detail, the just the fact that it's got working pistons and the articulation and everything else is just phenomenal. I it, I, I can't say enough positive about it. So. For a grade on this, I'm going to give this an S tier. This is one that I, from from hearing about it before I built it, I expected it to be an S tier, and it lived up to its ex my expectations. So, unlike say the Ariel, where I expected it to be an S tier, but there were these little tiny things that made it me prevent it from doing an S tier. So I had to give it an A. This is definitely an S tier. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when 
new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.